Hi, welcome to another episode in the series of Getting Started with Apache Spark. And uh, today's session is um, a very important step in terms of uh, getting your development environment set up so that uh, you can build applications, um, Spark applications uh, in your dev environment. Uh, in the video series so far, I've covered how you can install Apache Spark uh, in standalone mode and also covered how you can use the Spark shell uh, to run some very basic commands. Uh, at some point in time, uh, once you're past the initial um, playing around with Spark Shell, uh, you will want to create your own um, apps, uh, Spark applications, and that's when you need to uh, have your development environment in place. Um, so the video today, I'm going to cover uh, broadly two options that uh, you can use to build code for Apache Spark. Um, so one, uh, again, both of these are focused on uh, Scala as a programming language. Uh, but again, uh, within that, um, we, we have a couple of different options. So um, you can use the Scala IDE uh, with Maven um, for build. And uh, the other option is uh, to use the, the simple build tool for Scala, the SBT tool. Uh, so again, both these two have their own advantages and uh, disadvantages. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very broad topic, Maven versus SBT in itself. Um, uh, so I may cover it in a future video, but uh, again, there are these two options which I'm covering today. Both, uh, both are uh, fairly good in terms of how uh, you can build um, solutions for Apache. Uh, Apache Spark. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started and um, set up our uh, dev environment. Um, so the very first thing you need to do is uh, head over to scala-ide.org and uh, click on downloads and download the uh, the Scala IDE for your preferred uh, desktop operating system or your dev environment, uh, whichever uh, flavor of operating system you prefer. Um, I'm on um, flavor of uh, Ubuntu, um, so I'm I'm on the Linux version here. But uh, there might be slight changes if you're on a Windows slash Mac. Uh, but if you're on a Linux, everything that I'm doing, uh, you could very easily replicate. All right. So once you've uh, got um, um, the Scala IDE downloaded and uh, it's already running, uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a project. Uh, so you'll notice we are not creating the Scala project. Instead, uh, we'll create a Maven project. So do a quick search for Maven. And uh, let's leave uh, the defaults as is. And uh, let's just call Maven inside. Um, let's call this uh, examples. Okay. Uh, so we've got our folder set up. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, our project, uh, Maven project set up. Uh, you'll notice again, since we have used uh, the Maven uh, project type, um, there's um, no provision by default for Scala projects. So let's actually change that. Um, go to configure, add uh, Scala nature. Uh, it might take uh, a minute or so on your machine for the changes to, uh, to be updated. Um, yeah, you can see it's added um, a new library container. My suggestion is um, um, to change it over to 2.10. Uh, works better when you're trying to use Maven uh, along with um, uh, Apache Spark uh, development. Uh, so now we can uh, we have added the Scala nature. However, there's um, the folder structure is still very Java centric. So let's uh, go ahead and change that. Um, so let's click on the build path and click on the source tab, add a folder under main, let's call it Scala. And we'll add the pattern so you can see as a reference here, but I'm going to add Scala. Okay, so we've got Scala there. And uh, finally, just um, for ease of management, again, this is how you would um, um, you know, write um, much larger software projects. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not too uh, precious today about uh, naming, but uh, really keen to show you how to write code and uh, get it um, up and running and within Apache Spark. So again, please use your, your preferred best practice uh, for package naming. 
And then finally, let's um, let's add um, a Scala object there, and let's call this um, simple app. Okay, finish. All right, uh, so far so good. Uh, we have got a project uh, pretty much set up. Um, before we actually write any um, Apache Spark uh, code, let's actually add uh, the dependencies to Maven. Um, so uh, the quickest way is uh, go to a Maven repository and uh, find search for Apache Core, uh, Spark Core, sorry, uh, Spark Core, and uh, make sure you are using um, the correct version of Apache Spark. Uh, so on my machine, um, I've got 1.4.0. Um, uh, again, I've covered how you can install Apache Spark in standalone mode in a different video. So if you haven't looked at it already. Please make sure that you do that uh, before proceeding. So again, uh, go find the uh, dependency uh, corresponding to your version of uh, install Spark. And let's click on the file and add uh, the required dependency. Um, so here, you'll notice I've um, in advance, I've um, just added um, the dependency already. And so uh, to actually get back to uh, uh, you know, putting some code here, I'm going to rely on uh, some of the samples that's uh, already been published. Um, so head over to uh, the Apache site and under um, uh, getting started, you should find some sample code there. I'm, I'm using pretty much the same code as this uh, with uh, some slight uh, format, uh, formatting changes. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, just some minor tweaks. So let me change that. App. Not sure why that's happened. Uh, let me go back here. Backers.org. Let me go back to the site. Uh, I think I have copy pasted the wrong one. Change. Do you want to overwrite? Yes. So again, uh, give it some time. Uh, if it's the first time you're uh, you're setting up the dependencies, I'll just change the formatting a bit. Then let me come back here. So it's all good. Uh, okay, so that's that's pretty much it for us to get started. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is um, just set a master here, and I'm setting it to local, um, and the default to use as many cores uh, as available. And let's uh, run that. Okay, um, that's it. So this is the output. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, looking at the code itself, uh, setting up um, the Spark um, context is um, the very first step. So again, there's some um, some prerequisites before you create your own um, Spark application. So unlike uh, running it uh, in the Spark shell, uh, here you have to uh, create your own Spark context. Uh, again, suggest using the same variable names as uh, what you would find in the shell so that your code is easy to copy paste in the shell for debugging purposes. Um, and then finally, all, all we are doing is um, reading the contents from uh, a readme file and just um, checking how many uh, occurrences of uh, the letter A and letter B exist uh, uh, within the file. So, Nothing out of the ordinary, so really simple code. But uh, as you can see, with um, uh, with uh, the familiarity of uh, Eclipse, uh, we can be fairly productive uh, in, in writing Apache Spark applications. Um, so uh, again, one of the other things you'll want to keep in mind is since we are not running it in um, the 
the uh, the shell the spark shell anytime your application completes or terminates um, uh, the, it um, you no longer can access this URL so this URL is only available in the context of uh, the time frame that your application is running so that's one of the things you'll want to keep in mind all right, so, so far we have seen how you can use um, uh, the Eclipse IDE uh, for Scala. Um, the other option, and uh, that too using Maven, uh, the other option is to use the SBT tool directly. Uh, so before proceeding with SBT, make sure that um, you've gone and uh, installed uh, the SBT tool itself. Uh, so depending on your operating system, the process uh, of course varies. But if you are on uh, Linux and um, uh, say Ubuntu, you can follow the steps uh, listed here. So essentially you're um, installing the SBT tool and the prerequisites there. So make sure that uh, you've installed SBT before proceeding to the remainder of uh, the video. Um, so uh, it's, it's really easy to work with um, SBT. Um, so uh, all you need to do is uh, create some folder structure which uh, basically uh, re mimic that of um, of Maven. So all you need is a folder, a root level folder under that source and target and under source. Uh, again, uh, best practice is to uh, keep a tight folder structure, something similar like this. And of course, you'll break it down based on your package name. Um, and here I've I've got pretty much the same code. I've uh, just commented out um, the setting the master. Uh, it's basically the same code. So how do we build that uh, using SBT? Um, so if you head back to um, the sample uh, uh, code here, they've uh, described uh, what you need to do. So first step is, uh, uh, or one of the steps is to uh, create a SBT file uh, which has uh, a listing of the dependencies and um, any other Scala version dependencies and other parameters that you want to provide. So we need to create a .sbt file. And as I pointed out before, um, uh, the SBT tool requires a certain folder structure. Uh, so you have to abide by that folder structure. So just, um, just to show you as an example, I've, um, I've, I've got the code here in um, a different ID, I mean an editor, there's a sublime text. Uh, so as you can see, there's really no dependency on which editor you use, uh, particularly if you're using the SPT tool. And uh, finally, we'll, we'll go to the console and, oops. CD code. So um, if I look at the folder structure, find. Uh, so a very simple folder structure as um, I've not built uh, use the SBT tool already. So um, once we do that, we'll find that that creates a lot many other subfolder hierarchy. So again, created uh, this file here that's uh, the uh, simple.sbt. So again, it's uh, pretty much a copy from uh, the Apache website. So we are adding the required uh, dependencies here. And then finally, what we need to do is uh, we'll go back to our console. Um, so here we can see that we have the SBT file here. So let's run SBT package. And if it's uh, the first time, the very, very first time that you're running it uh, for a project, um, it can take a while um, uh, because it has to get access to all the required dependency, it downloads the required dependencies and various others. So you can see in the background uh, here, it started um, creating uh, quite many other folders um, and it might take maybe a minute or two uh, for the entire process uh, to complete. So I'm going to pause the video and resume once uh, uh, the build is complete. Okay, so now the build's complete. It uh, took uh, close to a minute for the whole processing um, to uh, have completed. So the build's complete. Uh, the next thing we, uh, we can do is, uh, again, uh, sorry, just before we do that, you'll notice that uh, behind the scene, it's uh, created quite many other folders uh, post running the SPT tool. Uh, 
Uh, now what we can do is um, in our console we can uh, run a command and uh, submit um, a job uh, uh, to Spark. So I've um, typed that here in advance. So let me just uh, tune that a bit. I, uh, oh yeah, I was playing around with this code, so just double checking if uh, the the package names are all in place. Uh, simple app master so here um, since I'm running it um, using the spark submit uh, haven't hard-coded what the master is um, I provided the master as a, a parameter so again we are specifying that it's a, it's a local master and it can utilize as many cores uh, that is available um, okay so let's actually run that all right so let's copy and paste that here so it's uh, pointing to the Spark submit and um, providing the name of the class there, uh, the full uh, full name, uh, including the package name. And then here I'm uh, providing the parameters I mentioned earlier. We're passing uh, the the master parameter and finally uh, pointing it to where we have just built. Uh, the project. So once you've uh, run the SBT command, uh, this is the folder here within the target uh, folder uh, where it uh, creates the jar file. Let's run that. So uh, as usual, Spark, um, I, it looks and feels like Spark shell, uh, running Spark, um, runs your Spark application, and uh, again, this was one of the reasons why I put some bit of formatting uh, in my code. As you can see, it's uh, easy to spot. So it's uh, exactly the same output as we saw with um, uh, when it was run from with an Eclipse. So again, there's no net change. But as you can see, there are a couple of different options here. Uh, one of the benefits of using SBT is uh, particularly when you have uh, very large projects, uh, you'll find that uh, SBT uh, is a lot faster. So as a simple example, if I, if I change one of the files here, um, and uh, uh, again, I did not make a massive change, and uh, say SBT package. Um, so it basically does incremental builds. So again, if your uh, if your project is uh, very very large, again SPT uh, provides um, uh, a lot more uh, you know developer productivity amongst various others, of course. Uh, but um, again, these are two broad approaches uh, that you can use um, depending on your workflow and how you uh, what solution you find more comfortable. You can opt for one or the other. Um, so I think that concludes uh, what I had to cover for today's uh, session, um, this video. So hopefully by the end of this video, if you're in a position to actually write some uh, code in Scala and get that compile, build, and finally run that as a Spark application. Uh, hope the video has been helpful. Look forward to seeing you on future series of uh, uh, getting started with Apache Spark. Thanks everyone for watching.